Hello everybody, um, today we will be going over a box and whisker plot problem, and here it goes. So we have that Stephen was invited to perform piano recital in preparation for the event, blah blah blah, he recorded the amount of time and minutes that he researched, rehearsed each day for the piano recital. So we know that he rehearsed for 32 days, and then he took all the data. And so, part A, we need to write down the median rehearsal time. Now, I will immediately say that Q2 equals the median. But if you have no idea what I'm saying, you will have the explanation now. So when you have a box and whisker plot, it looks something like this, OK? As we have the diagram as well, right? We have our x-axis and the y-axis. But what really matters is the x-axis, OK? Because on the x-axis, you know, it can start on zero and reach like whatever, like a thousand. It doesn't matter. The point is, this which is shown here will explain you five things of the data set. It will give you the minimum, the maximum, the median, the quartile one, and the quartile three, which I will explain briefly. I mean, in a second. So, this guy right here at the beginning, we could say, is the minimum. Okay, the lowest value in the set. Conversely, over here is the maximum, the highest value in the set. Here in the dead center, I mean it's not always in the dead center, but like the line between the rectangle, because this line could be like here or there, it just happens to be where I drew it. That is Q2, which, and memorize this, is the same as the median. And finally, we have Q1, which is here, and Q2, sorry, Q3, which is here. Okay, so the five important things that we have are Q1, Q2, Q3, and the minimum and maximum. Okay? And so the minimum and the maximum are pretty obvious, right? The lowest value, the highest value in the set, Q2 is the median, so the middle value. And what is Q1? You could imagine Q1 as like the median of the lower end of the set, while Q3 is the median of the higher end of the set. Okay, that is honestly like the best way I can put it. Um, so yeah, just go with it. Okay, Q1 is the median of the lower end of the set, and Q3 is the median of the higher end of the set. So you can literally like, split the data like in half, like right down to Q2, and look at one side of the data and on the right side, the other side of the data, which is kind of what happens in the box and wixer plot. You see the line right here, cutting it down in the middle, cutting down the rectangle. You have the lower half of the data and the lower, I mean, sorry, and the higher half of the data, okay? And so in this way, you can also see in which direction it, it's skewed. In the drawing that I made, the data is skewed to the lower end. Okay, because there's a lot more data points in the lower part. Because the rectangle has a thicker, uh, has more space on the left side than on the right side. Okay, so whatever. I think it's worth explaining two things um, that I forgot to mention earlier. So when people talk about Q1, Q2, and Q3, another way people look at it is that Q2 is halfway through, right? So it is referred to as the 50% mark of the data, Q1 as a 25% and Q3 as a 75%, okay? And then you have the maximums, right, at 100, the minimum at 0%, and that is why I explained it as um the Q1 being like the median of the lower end because it's actually 25%, and Q3 as the median of the higher end because it's 75% uh, through. Okay, and the last thing that is worth explaining, that is, it does not come into play in this problem, but it definitely will in various uh, box and whisker problems, is the IQR. Okay, the IQR is referred to as the interquartile range, and I mostly see it as like a part A or part B. It's usually worth like just one point. Um, the IQR 
is merely Q3 minus Q1. Okay. If you want to memorize it visually, you can look at it as like you have the box and whisker plot, right? And you are subtracting like the inner part of it. Okay. Like you're subtracting Q3 and Q1. Okay. You're focusing on the rectangle itself. Okay. Not on the lower ends. Yeah. So visually appealing, think of IQR as like maybe I with inner and you're focusing like the inner part of the diagram. So that would be like the rectangle. Okay. Memorize it how you will, but this will show up the IQR. So memorize that and you can get a free point. That is the main explanation of the box and whisker plot. And so now when we look at part A and it asks us, write down the median rehearsal time, it is super duper obvious what it is. It's, oh, it has to be the line in the rectangle, right? That cuts it through the middle. And in this scenario, that goes to 42, okay? So Q2 is the median, which in this scenario is 42. Yeah, and it's important to write down um, the units because that will always, always be part of the mark scheme. And in this case, the rehearsal time is going to be 42 minutes. Okay, that is part A. Now, part B says that Stephen states that he researched on each of the 32 days. State whether Stephen is correct and give a reason for your answer. Um, as I well said it in the explanation before, the box and whisker plot gives us the value of a minimum, right, amongst other things. And so, if the minimum value is greater than zero, that means that every single day he practiced for more than zero minutes, right? So, in this scenario, the minimum is 20, as we can see here. That is a 20. And so, we can say that Stephen always practiced more than 20 minutes. Okay. And then if you have time or whatever, you say like uh, the minimum is greater than or I mean, the minimum was 20, you know. You can also say that the minimum is greater than zero, and that would also give you full points. Okay. But it's important to understand like what the heck the box and whisker plot is even telling it to you in the first place. And if you understand that this is the minimum, suddenly part B looks super, super easy. I insist that the hardest part in these problems is merely understanding what the heck, what the <laughs> what the heck a plot, uh, box and whisker diagram even is, okay? So parts A and B are super easy in that sense once you have that down. Now for part C, which is the hard part for sure, we have that on K days, Stephen practiced exactly 24 minutes. And we need to find the possible values of K. The reason it's possible values, even though it's asking for exactly, is that we don't have the data set. What we have in the box and whisker diagram is the representation of the data set, okay? We have the minimum and the maximum, but we don't know how many minimums there were or how many maximums there were. We just know that this could be one or many of the minimums. You know what I mean? And so the medium could be one of the many 42 minutes that existed in the data set. That's why it's asking for possible values and not exactly. If you had literally the data set in front of you, you could find the exact values. But in the box and whisker diagram, it's not quite like that. And so for the possible values, the intuitive way, which I think is a better way to explain it, is that if Stephen practiced exactly 24 minutes, which would be this guy right here, we first notice that this is in the lower end Okay, it's in the lower end of the box and whisker diagram, right? And so if the median here is halfway through, what is halfway through of 32 days? If you divide it by two, it's 16, okay? So if 16 is right down the middle, the date on the lower end is going to be 15 days. Okay, and even though we have that Q1, which is the dotted line I did down here, is uh, 24, and they're asking for 24 minutes, we're still not certain that there was a single day where Stephen had exactly 24 minutes. Again, 
these are all like averages of the data sets okay i mean when you look at the minimum and the maximum in a box and whisker we know that those values like existed okay but when you look at the q1 which is like the median of the lower end of the data or q2 which is the median of the whole set or q3 which is the median of the higher end of the set those are averages those are averages and so you can't be certain that those days even happen okay because if one day you eat three ice creams and another one you eat five then you add them two and you say oh no on average i have four ice creams a day well you never have four ice creams a day in the data set you didn't but it goes like you know what i mean <laughs> and one day you ate three and the other day you ate five but the average is still four even though there were never four days i mean four ice creams a day and so going back to the problem the possible values for k are well they could be maximum 15 and they could be zero okay this is the answer for c and so the most important part for c i think is well it's two things but the more important one is that hey it could have been zero you never know and you want to make sure that you write 15 and not 16 okay the the biggest um point gain here is like making sure you get like the minimum and maximums for k correct and so that would be the problem um i do want to say quickly that the most important thing in these problems is understanding what the heck a box and whisker diagram is once i understood that everything became so much easier and if you're in the middle of the test and you don't have time to do everything because time strain is definitely a, a real thing um notice that a and b were super fast like if you know what a box and whisker plot is you can do it like in a second write down the median that's gotta be q2 but bada bada boom 42 right Stay whether Stephen is correct that he, he researched on each of the 32 days. Well, what is the minimum? Is it equal to zero? Then Stephen would be wrong. Is it greater than zero? Then Stephen would be right. And for part C, well, of course, that's a little more complicated. But just notice, you get A and B in like a minute. And that is already half the points of the whole problem. And so just keep that in mind. Huh? Even if you don't have much time, even if the box and whisker diagram looks scary, part A it's probably gonna be really easy on part b it's not gonna be far off but part c is a little tricky okay but use your time wisely maybe do this at the beginning i don't know it's just a little bit of a tip um anyway thanks for watching and i hope it helped